Alrighty, so this is the player's diff we've had on the candy cart, and you can see some of the fluid dumped out when I had it laying on this cookie sheet, uh, cooking sheet. So all we have to do is, when it's in forward gear, it's skipping teeth really bad, and I'm sure it's got a you know worn out gear or dog in there or something. So what we have to do is pull the pulley off, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull this adapter sleeve thing we made off, and we're going to drain all the fluid, pull the side covers off. We're also going to clean the case really well. You know, check out seals and everything, and then order the parts we need because the buggy is in powder coat right now. So I want to make sure everything is top notch when it gets back from powder coat. We tapped the end of this, and or no, we, it was already tapped. We just made this uh, machined spline uh, hub that basically uses both sets of hubs for extra strength Tylenol and uh, you know for our sprocket. But the only bad thing about this is when we wear out a sprocket, we got to cut this sprocket off and weld on a new one. That's the downside to it. But you know, it is what it is. washers I'm gonna go ahead and pull the drain plug this diff actually sets up like this I'm gonna pull the drain plug drain all the oil and then I'm gonna dump this pan so we're not working in a pool of oil so this is three-quarter drain plug and it's super nasty inside of here this is actually new fluid and that's how bad it looks so I can imagine it's going to be in pretty rough shape inside of this thing. It's like a peanut butter look. So it definitely had some sort of water and grime in it from just being abused over the years. And let this drain, and then we can start pulling it all apart. Guys, we're going to take a real quick break from the video to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Blaster. We've been using Blaster a ton over the years. I've been using this stuff ever since I was a kid. You already know the original PB Blaster which eats through rust like nobody's business. But today, we're gonna to be talking about their parts solvent. So basically, this is a parts degreaser and washer you can use in a parts washer. This is a five gallon bucket. You can also get it in a gallon and other sizes. But this stuff will break down grease and grime off your engine blocks, off your engine parts. Anything you really need to use it, we use it on our engines when we're rebuilding a small engine or if we get an engine sandblasted and coated. There's a lot of sand and grime inside the block, so we need to wash it out before we use it. So we went to Harbor Freight, got us a parts washer. We put about 12 gallons of this in it, and it's made life a thousand times easier. I used to use about six cans of brake cleaner, which is also by Blaster, cleaning out an engine. But now I can just set it in there, wash it out real quick, and get it back on the uh, workbench to put back together. And it's a lot faster and I can reuse this stuff and reuse it until it's pretty much uh, black. So make sure to check out the links in the video description. Blaster has a ton of products. They're constantly upgrading their lineup and they're starting to really come out with some really useful stuff. So uh, check out the whole lineup of Blaster products in the video description. Huge shout out to Blaster for sponsoring today's video. We love them and we'll be using them to the end of time. So we're going to use a 3-8 socket. We're going to pull out all the bolts on this side of the housing so we can see what's going on in there. I'm going to run this putty knife around the entire edge of it to try to get the seal broken. I don't really know what they use as a seal. Looks like we can use two pry bars right there. Take two pry bars like this. Alright, so as soon as I turn the camera off, this side popped right out. So not as bad as I would think. The seals look really good. There's not a lot of chunks in this side. It wasn't like this thing was ridiculously blown or anything. I'm going to get these shafts pushed all the way back down in here. So, there we go. Not quite sure how this whole thing comes apart, but it's actually way cleaner than I thought. This gear, the main spline looks good, the main spool or whatever you call it. 
this gear looks good so it's going to spin it it was skipping teeth I mean everything looks really good in here there's not a single worn out gear which I'd rather take this thing apart and know everything's good instead of just assuming there's a nasty looking chain tooth with some rust probably where water set in but the chain looks good I'm looking and checking out all the gears so I don't know I think maybe I didn't have it engaging all the way is the only thing but like I said I'd rather pull this thing apart and know everything's good instead of just guessing uh, on it we've got a hairline fracture and the case is separating right here it follows down a little bit don't know how far it goes I'm gonna clean that up and take a look at it because that's definitely seems like where we would leak fluid for sure so I might be able to take a you know a grinder and cut a notch in that and weld it you know like bevel it out really well weld it and then take and you know re machine this flush uh, which is disappointing but I might be able to even find this case online I'm just checking out all the the teeth right now and everything looks great actually like way better than I was imagining so on this diff we're going to pull this whole spool set up apart to see if we have any wear this bearing here just pulls right up and it does have a spacer washer on the bottom of it so keep up with that then with this gear if you lift up on this shaft you can slide there's a needle bearing inside this gear so what we're going to do is use a pick we're going to slide it up a little bit push a pick in from the back side to be able to slide this bearing out of this gear here so i'm gonna take a pick set lift up on this gear get in there and push on that bearing and you can replace all these bearing all balls makes a kit what a weird company name uh but all balls makes a bearing kit There we go, we got that needle bearing out. Now we can just rotate that sprocket off. Now here's our shifting dogs. They're gonna wanna make sure all the corners look fine. This gear actually looks really good, so we don't need to replace it. We have another washer, sits right behind it. Then here's our main shifting dog. Now what we're gonna have to do is put a set of pliers on this shifter lever here to shift this way while we slide this whole gear set up up now getting this back in is a now getting this back in is a little bit of a pain because of how it's got this little clip down in there but we'll show you that when we get to it and there we go we pop that up and this whole shifting fork comes out now I thought this is what was going to be bad so I'm going to make sure all the corners look fine which it actually does but this just slides in there slides back down and then when you shift it it's pushing this up and down and engaging on that other gear we just pulled out so we're going to set this all aside now we can pull out this main spool get this whole gear assembly out this is your final drive of course everything looks good on it because there's not a lot to wear other than the teeth right here so now we got to get this chain off do I know how absolutely not yeah it actually can slide somewhat up off of this gear so we're going to slide this up a hair try to get the bearing out of the hole okay there we go now we can lean it towards the opposite gear set rotate this chain off probably be handy if we pulled this little guide out with a Phillips head It'd give me a little impact with a frillis cred when we put this back together we're going to make sure to blue loctite these screws back in I definitely don't want them coming out inside the case we need to do the same thing with this shifting fork we need to basically rotate it counterclockwise to 
get it out and this whole assembly can come out once we get that because we can't really pull this chain off with it in there there we go okay so slide that chain back off of this now we can slide it off of the bigger gear set and pull this all out as one unit oh that slides right out there well shoot well shoot far now we need to remember how we just did that we basically don't necessarily have to pull this shifting fork as long as we can get everything lined up these are the dogs i was worried about being messed up but everything looks amazing in this transmission so I wonder if my problem was my engagement wasn't adjusted enough and it wasn't maybe it was just throwing it right there and kicking past that because this is tapered from factory it looks like everything is like beautiful in this thing but this was the biggest thing I wanted to pull it all apart to make sure before you know stuff and things things and stuff so now we can fix the cracked case which is this side here and uh, get it all put back together Yay. might go uh, together a little hard that crack goes from there goes runs down the case and stops about right there it looks like it hairline fractures even more inside the case than it did on the outside so we gotta make sure we clean that up get it welded because a set of these cases are about 200 dollars for both halves all right, so we took it and beveled that crack out and drilled a hole at the end of it. The crack went further on the inside. It was all the way down to the case. So Brandon, brother Brandon, is going to slap a fat caterpillar on that puppy. we got the old prime weld set up, so iron the hole. So Brandon got that thing welded up really nice. Uh, for cast, this actually did really well. So a uh, little bit of dirt in it up there, but the biggest thing about aluminum is you want to keep it as clean as possible. You can see where we got down here, he had to go around. I may have to take a deburr tool and really clean up that bolt surface, but I think this is going to handle, um, I mean, it should be honestly stronger than it was before. and. The only reason I had my brother weld it, he welds aluminum every day. So he's just a you know quick trip down here. So why not have him do it and know that it's as best as it can be? So we'll get this all cleaned up and I'm gonna polish this case. Then we gotta sand this surface here. This is what we're gonna have to sand. Let me get it to focus. So he had to weld up this. So I'm gonna very lightly take a flap disc and clean this and get it you know smoothed out to match this these two surfaces because this was kicked up so i'm hoping that doesn't affect anything with long-term use like this won't leak any fluid it's the only thing i gotta that i'm a little concerned with i'm going to run a bead of rtv after i get everything cleaned up really nice and grind this down uh, to get it to seal as best as possible and then we'll make sure we go in here and clean everything and there's the penetration you can see uh it got a good penetration he did cap over this weld just to make sure that edge stays strong so should be good we can pop the race back in once we get everything cleaned up we got a ton of stuff to clean up so uh, let's get to work Jeepers, you're strong i've been working out All right, so we pulled this thing apart. We cleaned everything, every gear set, everything in the uh, new Harbor Freight's parts cleaner, uh, parts washer shown on screen. Now, when we're putting these uh, forks back in, there's a spring loaded setup right here. You can see we're gonna have to push this back to allow it to notch down into this. So, you're gonna need a pick or a friend to help you do this there we go i just pushed it back with a pick and then i shoved a pick 
into it. So we can now slide this fork down in into the hole. And there we go. We have this gear set. seating that bearing all the way down in there so now we can take our larger of the two shafts I'm gonna go ahead and spray the parts wash off of this with some brake cleaner I'm afraid the parts washer could eat up my grease so I'm gonna take our chain and get our chain on there There we go. Have our chain drive set up. And this will get tight once we put everything in here and it holds it where it needs to be. Okay, so once you have these two gear sets put in, uh, it's nice to have this shifted up in the up position while we put this big gear in. Uh, there's probably a better uh, route to go when putting this together, but so we pop that up, we can now slide this final drive right down and get it just past these dogs right here. Just line the T sets up. It's not the way you're supposed to do it, but it works. Right. So now we need to make sure our main bearing under this is getting seated. So there we go. We have our final drive knocked down in there. We didn't damage anything. Not the right way to do it, but you know. Now uh, we have our one washer already on this shaft, slide the washer on. Then we can slide our main gear with the dogs and all this stuff looked really good. So we can put that on kind of like that right there. What we're gonna wanna do is shift this down though to allow this to set where it needs to. Then we can take this needle bearing, we can get it set all the way down in there Put another washer and then our bearing this bearing falls right on there so now we can make sure our surfaces are super clean we can apply some i'm going to go with black rtv i'm going to let it set up for about five to ten minutes and get tacky then we can put our two halves together and we'll be good to go i'm going to scour the table make sure we're not forgetting any pieces but as far as i know we're not so everything is put back together.
looks like we held almost exactly a half a quart. So um, that's what I assume a player's diff takes. Half a quart of, what was that, 80, 90 gear oil. And then the dipstick does have a magnet on it, a magnet, as my son calls it, you see. So it'll catch any kind of debris, but this transmission is quite old, so I would imagine it's fully broke in. So any debris other than teeth loss or whatever, um, the fluid should stay fairly clean, I would imagine. But you never know, we might be abusing it way more than players ever intended, who knows. But um, so, I was going to show everybody just in case you was interested in using one of these diffs on your buggy how i made this diff mount now if i could go back i would make this bottom plate out of quarter inch at least and i did it out three sixteenths it's perfectly fine but it would just been a lot beefier if i would have did it you know out of something like that um biggest thing you're worried about is flex this is where all the stress is going because that's the chain the belt side doesn't have as much stress because it's a belt has a little give but this bolt here i added so last time we drove it we didn't have this this is basically threaded into this piece of metal and this is just a a little hole kind of like this side has one as well it's just an indention right there it's not threaded so i took a fine thread half inch bolt and i grinded the threads off of everything that was exposed and it threads into this and just shoves into this to give it an extra support to keep this side from wanting to flex. Then I box this in with a piece of 3 16 There's a better way to make this mount. This is just the first one I've mounted. I would completely redesign it if I was redoing it, but this is a pass-through bolt. goes through the whole entire uh, diff, so there's a quarter-inch ear on each side. Then I took one-inch tube, slant cut it, and made this piece out of multiple pieces because i couldn't get it in my brake a certain way i broke this on my brake and then this is welded both sides so i beveled that like a 45 degree angle and did a fat weld down both sides so that's super strong and then this is the shifter i'm using boat push pull cables it was very expensive like a hundred dollars a piece it was the only thing i could use for my particular application because we couldn't use tie rods like they use on the atv um we had to use the push-pull configuration uh, with cables. Um, so I went in, last time we drove it too, we didn't have these braces right here. No, sorry, we had these, but we didn't have this plate up here. So basically I added this plate right here, which significantly, you know, strengthened this. So now it's fully boxed and we shouldn't get any flex out of this, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, but if we do, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> There's a lot of stress on this point because these shifters are actually very hard to shift. But this is ready to put back on the buggy. Fully serviced, lubed up. So we do need to put a breather right here as a breather nipple beside the uh, fill. We'll run that down to the ground and put a check valve on it so air can only go out and not in. And that'll keep water from going in our diff if we get in mud or whatever. But uh, yeah. Hope this helped you out on your, maybe your players. Who knows? It's in neutral right now. There you go, players! So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Huge shout out to Blaster for sponsoring this video. We did clean that entire diff and it looked like new when we got it out of that parts washer uh, because of this Blaster parts solvent. So make sure to check out the links for Blaster products. I hope this helped you guys out if you have a player's diff on your buggy or if you even have a player's ATV because there wasn't too good of videos out there on how to pull this diff apart and uh, you know all the the breakdown of it so I just wanted to film this process because we wanted to pull it apart check and I'm glad we did because that massive crack was in the case luckily we have these Sigmund weld tables they're crazy crazy flat and when we welded that case we clamped it down to flex that you know the case was like separating so the two sides was like that so we clamped it down to that table super hard and re-flattened it back out so when we welded it it leveled everything out so once I grinded it uh, with a flap disc smoothed it all out uh, it should be 100% sealed. It hasn't leaked no oil yet, but we haven't drove it. So make sure to tune in to the next video where we put this whole chassis back together. We strip it down, uh, sandblast it, powder coat it, put it back together, and you'll see it finally ripping in all of its glory. So thank you guys so much for supporting us and uh, watching these videos. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already, and comment down below what you think. And uh, make sure to check out Blaster because they're a bunch of sweethearts. We love you guys, and God bless.